This is my most requested video, how I draw my Lego minifigures. It's been asked by people on YouTube and Discord, so I thought that I should go ahead and do it. It's actually been sitting around on my computer since the end of November, but I finally had the chance to actually sit down and put it together. It'll be a bit more fast-paced and less formal than my videos usually are, but that is pretty much how my drawing efforts go. So here's how I draw a minifigure. Short disclaimer, if you have epilepsy or are in any way sensitive to fast-moving things in a video, you're probably better off just listening to this video or not watching. I work in a very fast-paced, clicky-clicky mode, and it can hurt people's eyes, I've been told. Sorry. Be forewarned, I will be going pretty fast, so just try to keep up. The first thing you want to do when you're drawing is find a drawing program. Mine is Fire Alpaca. I have been using it for several years now, it's great, it's like Photoshop for people who are poor. I'm poor, so this works out very well. And then take a screenshot in LDD or Mechabricks or a Studio, whatever you prefer for LEGO programs, of the character base. Since I am drawing Cal Kestis from Star Wars Fallen Order, I've decided to use just a regular minifigure with dog trainer hair and a lightsaber. And that's when you go into line work. Make sure to create a new layer uh, when you start drawing, because layers are important. That way you don't erase too much of what you want to erase, and just start going crazy with the lines. Line work probably takes the longest, and it's the most tedious part of these types of drawings, because they're what make the figure pop. They're the base, they're the structure. Um, it's important that everything is straight and clear and crisp. I love the word crisp. And it's they're just very important. Many figures are sort of split up into like three parts, being like the line work, the the details of the figure and then just coloring. So line work is the first and probably most important part. When it comes to line work, Drawing rounded things is really, really hard. Like this lightsaber, this gave me so much trouble because it's just so rounded and I'm bad at drawing rounded things. See, I, it, just, it just took me way too long and I'm still practicing on those. Um, so once, once you have that done, and I will have this done soon, I promise, I've yeah, there we go, see? You could go into a lightsaber. The way I do that is with a transparent brush. You just draw the outside and then fill it in with transparency and then erase all of the extraneous edges. There we go. And it is at this point that you should probably pull up your reference image that you forgot to put in at the beginning of the, of the drawing because that's what I did. So. Don't, don't be alarmed if you forgot. Seeing as it's Cal Kestis from Star Wars Fallen Order, I decided I should take a picture of Cal Kestis from Star Wars Fallen Order and make sure that I start the detail work. Again, start a new layer when you go to a different part. And detailing, it's the second most important part because that's where the detail of the figure comes in. It's probably the most fun part, because that's when you can actually start to draw and not rely so much on the line tool. Detailing is where your talents actually come in handy. So thank you, thank you for that, drawing skills. Faces and clothing are very difficult to draw, um, especially in a stylized manner like this, because you don't know which details to leave in, which details to cut out. Honestly, I probably leave too many in. I, I like my details, and sometimes I just need someone to tell me to stop. Though, if it's in service of your style, then go for whatever you want. I know friends who draw minifigures, and they like to have as much detail as possible. I like to go for a more realistic route with... Uh, stylization, like I said, 
while also keeping the spirit of the character. So whichever you think fits your style, go for that. Art is a very subjective art. I don't know where I'm going with this. All I'm saying is just do whatever you want. It's fine. Detail work like this can take a long time. And sometimes, if you are trying to make it as detailed as possible, it can just feel like a slog when you get to certain parts. Like, why do, you, why do I have to draw so many belt buckles? Why do I have to draw so many pant pockets? Is Calcastus an anime character? Why does he have all of these pockets? Don't ask me where I got that from. But they're worth it. It really is, when you get to the finished product. You'll be able to see it, step back, and be like, oh, okay, that's why I drew so many pockets and belt buckles. That's why Cal's an anime character. It is at this point that part three starts. Again, new layer. Always add way too many layers. Layers, just do all of the layers. And this is part three, after I do this little gauntlet thing, where you start to color. Coloring is fun. You can add shadows like I'm doing right now. You can add more shadows. Shading is... Ignore that. I like to draw wrinkles and clothes to give it sort of a 3D, 3D, 3D aspect. Um, and the, yeah, the, the, fill, the fill tool in this stage is your best friend. Um, when you're filling like this, minifigures tend to have a lot of little spaces in their drawings. Make sure that every space is filled in. So if you make it like a transparent PDF, uh, PD, P, PNG, if it's a transparent PNG, that way no embarrassing holes can be seen in the drawing. Also, add spaces to shade. Like I said, shading's fun, and it also helps your figures pop when they're viewed. Makes them seem a bit more special, I guess. Detail, uh, detail coloring is actually really fun. Uh, you could take my word for it, but that's, again, where everything starts to come together. Because you can see it becoming like the... the uh, the movie or the show or the video game character in pretty much every way because there's if you haven't noticed our world has a lot of color and as such other things have a lot of color you also have to make sure that you do not forget to fill in things again that can be kind of embarrassing when you look back in your drawing and you see the one spot that you're like oh Dang it, I forgot to color that in. And people will people will comment on it. Because people are jerks. N never never ask for critiques from people. They're just they're just wrong. They're always wrong. This is where I try to see if I can add wrinkles to Cal's face, and that didn't work, as you can see, so I just gave up and started Oh yes, minifigures. When it comes to minifigures, if you'll notice on official ones, they never actually have the color going all the way to the ends of the the ends of the torso or the legs. So as a drawer, you could do the same thing and cut out some of the lines and colors. And here we go! This is the completed minifigure. Calcastus from Star Wars Fallen Order. Done for your pleasure of your tutorialing because it, yeah it's a tutorial and that that is how to draw calcastus and if you follow all of my steps 100 percent to the letter you will have a drawing of calcastus that looks exactly like this make sure to uh, give me credit because that's plagiarization and that is how i draw a minifigure confusing yeah I, i'd agree it's very confusing but it's rewarding because it gives you a good calcastus like the one I have right here that none of you are allowed to steal. I'm glad that this video is done because I've been asked to do it for a long time. 
And so I just I just wanted to get it out because I like you guys and I'll I'll do some of the things you ask me to. Not all of them, but just some of them. And until next time, later. <laughs>